What was life like in pre-calamity Hyrule Castletown? And how many could have roughly lived in the capital of the Kingdom of Hyrule? Hey, I'm Conrad, and today we'll try to get some estimates of the population of Hyrule Castletown, but also how it was visiting it. Something that I've been wondering for many, many years. So be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, press that notification bell, and again for all notifications to not miss any upcoming Zelda videos. But with that out of the way, let's get inside Breath of the Wild's Lost Castletown. Due to its current state as Hyrule's main guardian stalker Malice Infested Wasteland, we have to look for estimates elsewhere, and we begin nowhere else than the current main Hylian settlement, namely Hateno Village, which has when counting Link and the Sheikah scientists, 35 inhabitants and 15 inhabited houses. In total, there are 17 houses with beds in the village, but two of these are still uninhabited. Also towers and mills don't count, only those with beds are included. By dividing the number of inhabitants with the number of houses, that gives us an average number of inhabitants per household in Hateno village of 2.3 for all of the inhabited buildings, and 2.05 when counting all buildings in Hateno with a bed. Though, as we all know, Hateno is a village, and its numbers were also impacted by the Great Calamity 100 years ago. How, as several of its strongest inhabitants, in particular men, died while defending Fort Hateno on that tragic day. Hence, it's more reasonable to include another comparison, one that is probably more fitting, as for one it isn't a village but a town, and with the exception of its champion, escaped completely untouched from the calamity. We are obviously referring to the only non-ruined town found in Breath of the Wild. Gerudo Town. Here we counted 55 inhabitants or NPCs. Keep in mind, it is a little hard to count the inhabitants of that town as many travel in and out of Gerudo Town. But let's take this rough number and divide it by the number of houses with a bed to get a rough estimate which can help us set an average of inhabitants per household in not only Gerudo Town but probably also pre-calamity Hyrule Castle Town. And it gives us 11 houses if we are generous, since there aren't that many houses with beds, but rather with couches in Gerudo Town. That gives us an average per inhabited house and apartments in Gerudo Town of exactly 5. Then let's assume that Hyrule Castle Town has a little more density than this. Why would we say that? As Hyrule Castle, a single entity or building, had plenty of royals, nobles, guards and knights living there permanently. Castle Town with the castle and prison also occupied far more space than Gerudo Town, and all towns with a big castle and royal court will always have higher density. The houses, as seen from this concept art and this 3D model made by Donny de Vries, Monster Mace, had far more density between each other in its central district, or more sparsely populated in its eastern and especially its western part. We realized this after studying closely the ruins and foundation of central, eastern, and western castle towns. Based on this number, despite the very high likelihood that a castle and military watchtower brought it much higher, we decided to set the estimated average number of inhabitants in Castletown to a conservative 6 per inhabited building. A little higher than Gerudo Town, but more than double that of Hateno Village. Why? As this was the capital of the Kingdom of Hyrule, the center of its absolute monarchy, major military stronghold with its own royal and noble garrison, central trading hub, and most of all the only town at its time with a diverse population. Hylian, Sheikah, Gerudo, Rito, Goron, Zora, you name it. All were allies of the royal family before the Calamity, and had their immigrants to Hyrule Castletown. So how do we get to a rough estimate of the potential population? By dividing up Hyrule Castletown into five districts. Central, East, West, Castle and Prison. And by doing so, we got the following division. East Castle Town has one third of the buildings that are found in the center, while West Castle Town has one sixth of the buildings in the center. And that is when we're counting houses or tenements, which I think should be a rather rough estimate, but it at least gives us a pinpoint since it's completely impossible to predict or even find out how many buildings there were because the foundations are often not there or simply covered in malice in Breath of the Wild. Let's begin with number of houses, tenements in the center. In row 1 we have 11, row 2 has 13, row 3 17, row 4 20, and row 5 24. That gives us a center square district of 85 buildings. If we go for the eastern part of Hyrule Castle Town, having one third of the structures of the central section, then that gives us 28 buildings in East Castle Town. Western Castle Town, as we previously mentioned, was less densely populated than the center and even the eastern section of the town, so with one sixth of the buildings found in the center, that gives us around 14 buildings in Western Castle Town. 
Hence, that gives us a rough estimate for Castletown without Hyrule Castle and Hyrule Castletown Prison at 127 buildings. By taking our density number of 6 inhabitants NPCs for each building, that gives us a whopping 762 inhabitants, without even counting Hyrule Castle. There we probably find another 100 including the royal family, royal guards, some of the nobles and most of the knights. Though outside the wall we could also count the prison, which with this density and population should not have more than 20 inmates. Or at least not more than 10 inmates that are inhabitants of Castletown proper. Remember, we're talking about a much more populated Hyrule 100 years ago, so 882 inhabitants in Castletown doesn't sound too far-fetched. Though, if the average for Castletown was the same as for Hedena Village, so let's say 2.3 inhabitants for each household in the era of the wild, then Castletown may have less than 500 inhabitants. Maybe even 300 would be too much. So I think the number, if we've got Castletown, and I mean in the game itself, I think it would have been somewhere between 100 and 200. Programming NPCs especially with the sophistication, the day-night cycle that they have in uh, Breath of the Wild, I think that there's no way that we would see more than somewhere between 100 and 200, at the most 250, in an untouched Hyrule Castletown. Let that sink in. Just imagine all the side quests and buildings we could explore. Now, no wonder the development team decided to implement it as a smoke ruin and wasteland in the game, because implementing all of these NPCs, side quests, interiors and buildings would take forever and definitely delay the game even further future maybe we could see bigger numbers because games like The Witcher 3, Her Horizon Zero Dawn and obviously games like GTA have been able to add many many more NPCs than that. But even then compared to real life equivalents like say compared to Rothenburg of the Taubers medieval core is four to five times larger than Castletown and its buildings are also taller. In the 1300s it had 5,500 inhabitants within its walls. In other words our numbers shouldn't be too far off when it comes to the Castletown. Though keep in mind that in Hyrule we most often see two adults living together with a child, with a few exceptions where families have multiple children. So more reminiscent to modern day Japan than medieval Europe. Now then, let's get into the inhabitants, which would together with the castle and prison include the royal family with King Rome and Princess Zelda, and also her mother if we count before her passing, the royal guard with Link, priests, the Hylian nobility, the Sheikah of the royal court, regular knights, scholars, tradesmen, craftsmen, soldiers, beggars, and obviously criminals. A typical feudal society which fits the absolute divine monarchy that is found in Hyrule. Interestingly, unlike what is the case in much of the industrialized world, the rich district of the capital of Hyrule outside of its grand half-timbered center and square with landmark fountain was not located in the less populated and hilly West Castletown, where we found such landmarks as the town reservoir and prison, but in East Castletown. Why? As it contained the religious heart of the capital, Hyrule Cathedral. Another reason why East Castletown was more attractive than its western counterpart was the Castletown Watchtower. We have established Hyrule Castletown. Its seat of power and wealth is obviously Hyrule Castle. Its religious and defensive center in the east, the commercial heart of the kingdom in the central square, and its less attractive section in the west due to the unfavorable terrain for construction and the proximity to the criminals locked away in Hyrule Castle Town prison. So if we decided to visit Hyrule Castle Town as visitors for a week, what would we be able to experience? Based on Breath of the Wild's memories, the King's Journal, Zelda's Diary, and Carl's Quotes, we can present to you the following Castle Town which is a bustling and dense center of the powerful and divine kingdom of Hyrule, which is dominated in all of its corners by the seat of the royal and divine power in the country, Hyrule Castle. But upon entering the main gate, we would after noticing the loud street life filled with Hylian, Goron, Zora, Rito and Garuda merchants, first and foremost notice the main street and stairs leading down to the town central square and beyond it, Hyrule Castle. Here we would find all kinds of commerce, street sellers from both elegant shops, but also market stores. Naturally, as found in the rest of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, the central square would house the most expensive and luxurious inn in all of Hyrule, with the softest beds and best food and views straight on the fountain and Hyrule Castle. On the same square we would find Hyrule's banks, finest blacksmiths, bladesmiths, tailors, hat and shoemakers, and possibly even barbers. All that would help us get the right weaponry accessories, fashion, style and cut trim to fit in or even impress the citizens of the capital. Perhaps even join in one of their conversations, which we know was full of gossip, mostly about the royal family and Princess Zelda. As King Rome so nicely put it, You know how the gossip mongers refer to you. They are out there at this moment, whispering amongst themselves. 
that you are the heir to a throne of nothing, nothing but failure. It is woven into your destiny that you prove them wrong. Do you understand? Well that and the danger of Calamity Ganon returning, which would probably make Castletown a very scary place to visit as Princess Zelda continued to fail in unlocking her power. People would be gloomy about the future and we would see inhabitants talking about the end being near. Likely, it would probably be more inviting to visit even during or right after the funeral of the Queen of Hyrule, as Castletown was mourning the loss of the dear queen and blood descendant of Hyrule. Though naturally, the best time to visit would be during royal ceremonies or festivities with street performers, artists, great food and so on. All in all, the loss of Castletown took away what could have been the most iconic location in Breath of the Wild. With such a potential for deep and brilliant side quests, exploration of hundreds of buildings and so on. We hope you enjoyed this video, but before you leave, be sure to leave a like, share the video so more people can see this Castletown theory and subscribe if you haven't already. Plus press that notification bell and again for all notifications. A big thanks to you for watching and to all our patrons. A special shout out goes to our new royal producer, Charles Shush. And please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.